first time. You bow your first time. Raise your hand. Uh, okay. I can put out a hundred dollar bill and get a number, bitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're glad you're here. I encourage you to be here tonight. Pray God give us a good service. I thank the good Lord. Still on Wednesday nights, we can run over a hundred, and that's encouraging. But we just need to pray. And I'm waiting for people to get back. And if you've been faithful, stay faithful. And you're going to be glad you have. Because you're going to share some corn, throw some cobs out, and hope you come to revival. Amen. And uh, everybody, every man back in his place. We've got a priest right there. And uh, around the camp, God has done great things for us. And things can be intact as far as starting another school here. And uh, thank the Lord that he's provided the teachers that we need. And, and uh, keep sending students. And it looks like we'll have as many as we did last year. And that's much to be grateful to God for uh, today. Now, this is a Baptist church. Amen. Way to go. All right. Uh, you notice the announcement in here, of course, our mission is con missions conference. The dates are there. And you see, we usually give a thousand dollars to help ministries every year uh, for Bibles. We always do that. And we'll continue to do that. It's good to see a dear friend of mine. It's kind of hard to, to see him. It would be easy on me to turn my back. But, uh, He's got a walking game with you, but he's not an old man. He's a young man, but he just thinks he's getting old. He's got it up in the air. Uh, I thank God for the Lord. Well, Barney Harris got saved and lived over the Stern Drive, I believe it was, years ago. And uh, the Lord tired, tied our hearts together at that time. I've been giving him the money on a monthly basis. He's been close to me ever since. <laughs> but I love him. And thank God he's kept it. And uh, the blessings they bring. How beautiful heaven is. And will be. When we get there. Okay? All right. The choir sounded good. Amen? Amen. That trumpet barely needs a lesson or two, but I think it's either way. Well, Adam knows what to do with that thing. All right.
never ceased to be honest when I was back. That you started it all with us when you gave us bread. And help us to be conscious of everything that we have from bread on. It's because of the good hand of God and how you have blessed us and been so good to us. Lord, there are people all over this building today that recognize I'm just overwhelmed by the goodness of God. And Lord, if we get your people to see your goodness, they'll get closer to you. They'll love you more. And I pray, dear God, you do that in all of our lives. Bless now the tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Just keep trusting. Amen. 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 All right, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And stand, please, as we read the Word of God. All right, notice verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Notice with me, please, in Hebrews chapter 12, I want to read a couple of verses there. Beginning with verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, Lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Let me pray, please. Dear Lord, as we bow before you, I would pray that our hearts would be humble, that our ears would be turned toward heaven. We know that you said to those representing people right on to the end in those seven churches, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit hath to say. So Lord, I pray you'd hide me behind the cross. I pray I'd be out of the picture. And it just be the Holy Spirit in charge of what is said and decisions that are made this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. Thank you with me on the words we find here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. Paul says, we preach Christ. We preach Christ. We well know as Bible-believing people that the theme of the Bible is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of Man. Praise God without sin. He is the beauty of God's holiness because He makes it all possible. He is the purity of God's nature. And you and I, if we're saved today, Peter says when we get saved, we receive the nature of God and is referred to in the Bible as the divine nature. By the way, that's what's going to get us on out of here to glory. The Bible says, search the scriptures, for in them ye shall find eternal life. And they are they which testify of me, speaking of Jesus. <clears throat> the Bible says, for had he believed Moses, he would have believed me, for he wrote of me. I think that every leaf of the Bible testifies of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if there's ever been a time when Christ needed to be exalted, when sinners needed to be evangelized, when saints of God needed to be edified, we're living in that time today. It's high time that we awake out of our sleep, as the Bible makes reference to, and get out here and not just talk about the bad times that we're living in and the uh, times of iniquity and sin being so rapid, but get out here and try to get somebody saved. If you're going to save, you get them out of sin, and the more we can get out of sin, the less we're going to have these perilous times that we're living in today as such. I'm thankful that Jesus Christ is not just all you need and all I need, but he is more 
than we need. That's why the Bible reminds us of the fact that we're not just conquerors, but we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us. I want to share a few things this morning with you regarding the Lord Jesus Christ and the one we preach. First of all, we preach Christ as the crucified Savior. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. Death by hanging, or as Stephen was, being stoned to death, or as many have been burned at the stakes as we know of, and as we have perhaps read about in Fox's Book of Martyrs and other places. In, in, with all of these, there is not any death that is comparable to the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. The crucifixion of the one who loved you and loved me so much that he was willing to stay on that cross. He could have called legions of angels, but he saw you. The Bible reminds us in Hebrews chapter 12. He looked down and he saw those that were going to get saved. Amen. And the joy that was set before him was the joy of you having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Being saved by the grace of God is yours. Thank God that we know today our Savior has gone and died that vicarious death for you and me on that old rugged cross. Amen. To get a good picture of his crucifixion from an Old Testament perspective, we can go back to Isaiah chapter 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our enemy. I love this. And the chastisement of our peace, he took your with me and took my with me, was upon him. By his stripes, oh my, we are healed. Amen. What a wonderful picture of our Savior. He died the death of all deaths on that old rugged cross. You and I cannot even begin to picture. What it would be like the way they treated Christ before he was placed on that old rugged cross to strip him, to, to put that, that cross on his bloody back. Can you imagine the Lord saying, I lay down. I believe they took that old rugged cross and laid that piece of wood down. And then he got on it and laid back. And he was lifted up. And then he was drunk. In that hole, but thank God he was lifted up from that. Amen. Lifted up to an old rugged cross. He was lifted up out of that fire tomb. He was lifted up off of Mount Zion. And when he left here, where he's coming back to, I don't remember singing that song. He lifted me. Amen. He lifted me. The older I get, the more I realize I need to lift every morning. Love lifted me. When we sing that hymn, we ought to be reminded of the fact of the love that drew salvation's flame and the grace of God that brought it back to man. I believe this. The more you and I can recognize the crucifixion of our Savior and the price that was paid for our sins, the more by faith we want to rightfully appropriate in our lives and get up here and try to stand up for Jesus in these various times that we're living in. Stay with me. Why did Jesus die? He saw you a sinner. And he saw me a sinner. He took your place. He took my place on that old broken cross. I'm thankful for that cross. I'm thankful for that grace. And I'm thankful he said, I'm going to be leaving. But I'm not going to be forgetting. Right. I'll have you in mind. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare that place for you, I'm not going to, it's not going to be problem. I'm not going to send someone. I'm coming to myself hey. to receive you into myself. 
that there ye might be also. Listen, we as Christians, we have been blessed so much. We as people have been blessed so much. And we're not careful. We do not need heaven, Paul. You don't know much at all about heaven if you don't believe that heaven is going to be far, far, far superior to anything out here. Right. Listen, fellow, billions and billions of dollars. Sad someone has lived a life like you and then commit suicide in prison. We're living in a time when money is the God of this world. Money. If I have money, I'm doing all right. If I get sickness, then I need the Lord. No, you need it for every breath. Amen. Every breath. Now, Christ was crucified. For he hath made himself to be sin for us. To be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. He died without sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Second Corinthians five twenty one. He said, "Why seventeen? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things by by have passed away, and all things are become new." And then he reminds us of this. Drop it on down to verse twenty one here. How I'm righteous. If you're saved today, you're righteous. You know what do you mean? There's only one thing that will get us into heaven, and that is make sure you have your robe on. Every time I use the scripture, I think about a dear lady back in Earhart, our pastor. And she was a lady of means, you know, she had money, and I'll never forget. It was back then, you know, when people didn't jump out of windows and go out of here and go and everything else. They'd come by the preacher. And she came by, and she took him by the hand, and she said, Reverend Joy, I said, where is he? <laughs> no. Reverend Joy, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to buy you a robe. <laughs> you go to the store, because you know. You go and find the nicest one, and I don't care if it's the most expensive. You can find it. I want my preacher in a robe. I'm glad I got a robe before I ever knew her. Amen. <laughs> September 20th, 1965, I put on a rope. I'm not going to hang myself in that one, but I'd hang myself in what she's talking about. <laughs> Could you picture me? <laughs> Why are you today, Paul? <laughs> a robe of righteousness. Uh, not anything you've done, I've done all. Of God, all because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on in. Amen. You got on the right of the Hey, You don't want to go there this morning, do you? <laughs> be better than sometimes go over when we'll be near the hospital. Hello? Uh, That's why we got caught that road right there. Now, Jesus. Look at this. He's done so much for us. Because of his crucifixion, you are here today. Because of his crucifixion, when we get to heaven, you'll be there and I'll be there all because of the shed blood Man. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. On an old rugged cross for you and for me. That's why we're going to fall down in the street. And we're going to praise him and show him our love because we realize I didn't pay anything for this kid. All because of Jesus. Now, we preach Christ crucified. Are you ready? We preach Christ as cured. So what are you talking about? I'm glad that he can cure man. These blind eyes can now see. He healed the blind in the body. He healed the dumb 
is the Bible. He healed the crook in the Bible. He healed the dead. I'm getting close to need that. In the Bible. He healed the crazy in the Bible. That gets here with y'all. He healed the lepers in the Bible. Uh, Jesus never faced a storm that he had to do anything but just peace. Regardless of what we face in life. Now, Jesus, I'm glad he can cure anything, excuse me, anything that needs to be cured. Right. Are you there? Okay. You say, well, I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed and I have terminal cancer and all that. I went to the Lord to heal me. <coughs> That's not even the beginning of the Lord. Wonder why lepers, lepers there was a there, there was no cure for him. But there was one, and that was Jesus. There was no cure for sin. That sin is above all. But Jesus took care of. Him. Are you ready? Let me just try to partly drive from home for just a few minutes. I believe that you say, well, Brother Joy. I've always been like this. I'm glad I'm not like I always was if you wouldn't want me here. Amen? Jesus made a change. He changed the way I walk. He changed the way I talk. He changed you. I believe that Jesus Christ is a curative for anger. Anger. Person after person has read the book, none of these diseases all about anger and gotten help from the Lord. The Lord can cure anger. I don't need it. The Lord can cure. You know, isn't it a sad thing? I thank God for some Christians that I know of. I'm glad if they are Christians and they're saved, they won't have the same spirit when they get to heaven to have it. Amen? Amen. Right. Yeah. Jesus Christ can cure a bad spirited person. We can you can add anything you want to this hip. Somebody, you know, it, I see time and time again. You try to compliment someone and then they come back something negative. Ever notice? Yeah. Jesus Christ can cure a negative spirit. What's wrong? But I will do that. I believe we've got too many Christians with a negative spirit. <clears throat> Are you with me? They lost the spirit that they got when they got saved. David said, I've gone away. A man has the God's own heart. And I've gone in the way of sin. Now I don't have the spirit that I used to have. Lord, please forgive me. Put renew the right spirit back in me. Within me, people around this country today, multitudes of professing Christians ought to find an old fashioned altar and cry out as the psalmist did, renew the right spirit. Not the spirit of the world, not the spirit of the flesh, but the spirit of the Holy Ghost in control of my life, filling my life, on the throne of my heart, mastering me, governing me, controlling me, so I can have that love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Amen? All over the tree. All over the tree. He can cure a negative spirit. Aren't you glad you can go to your Bible and you can see the Lord positive, 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 positive. Faith is optimistic. It looks at the bright side of things. The Lord says in the book of Deuteronomy, don't you just look at the dark cloud. God's well. God's alive. Be able to see the boy in the cloud, he says. We've got Christians today. They need to stop seeing all the dark cloud. By the way, we can have a few class over this place. <coughs> yeah. Dark cloud. They come and go. But Jesus is still right there. And he's just as 
sweet from the cloud of dark as he is when the sun is shining bright. This, he is the one who can cure. Don't stop. I can save you all day. You believe that, brother? I'm glad Jesus is the cure for the drug problem we have. Amen. I'm glad Jesus is the cure for the booze problem we have. I believe deliverance is sin. Hey. I believe the Bible teaches us don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. Death and when we think about sin, Jesus is the cure. He can cure a filthy mouth. No, no, no. How do you know? The book tells me so. The cross works. The blood will do what we sing about. It will do what the Bible teaches us about. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Oh my, it's a cure. By the way, Jesus is the cure for bad church attendance. I'm going to say that if I get stuck here now. Bad church attendance. Jesus is the cure. For that. Jesus is the cure when it comes to time. Hey. Hello? Yeah. Are y'all wrong? <laughs> Jesus is the cure. Right. He can cure. If we would just live as such. He said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it. You can't do this. Can't. Jesus is the cure for your financial trouble. Right. He's the cure. Brother, can I put you over the wall? I got a I don't want to do this child. Tell me, priest. Listen, we have a voice in the air when it comes to real children today. Uh, yeah. I believe that Jesus is the answer. He's the cure for so much we see today in the behavior of our precious boys and girls. He's a cure. Let me take this one call. Tell me. Tell me. Most people, more people are hurt by a tongue than anything you can ask. I said in Sunday school this morning, something like Joseph being the prophetic picture for us in the Old Testament of Jesus in the New Testament, and how we see so much in, in their lives alike because he was like Christ. But when the Lord saved you and saved me, are you there? He didn't take the poison out of your tongue. But he did bring all that was needed for you not to let that venom come out of your tongue. Right. Hello? Don't oh, have me out here. Let's get out here. I'm on. You say, well, how can we not hurt people by what we say? The Spirit of God being in control. When James says, your tongue is filled with deadly poison, he wasn't speaking to all the drug addicts and the liver hairs. He's speaking to all of us. All of us. I can forgive you for a lot, but I just, one thing, the sin, I can forgive. And some things you and I can say, and it doesn't make any difference how much we say, I didn't mean it. You keep on saying it over and over again, there must be some meaning somewhere. God help us. You say, I don't know what the world we're going to do with our child. Jesus is the answer. That takes me on to the next one. We preach Christ, crucified. We preach Christ as the cures. We preach Christ as the conqueror. The conqueror. Romans chapter 8, verse 37, you can quote it. We are more, I love that word, more, more than conquerors. Through Christ. We are more. These teenagers, 
Thank God. But I think there's about 40 here in that group Wednesday night. Thank God for them. And they're facing things that you and I can't even begin to fathom. However, that verse of scripture is for any generation, every generation, and regardless of how rapid sin might be, how regardless of how the devil might be on his rampage and such, there's more than you need in Christ. Not to be overcome, but to be an overcomer. Amen. Are you there? More than comes through him who loved us and gave himself for us. Now, you know what this is needed so much today? I grant you there's marriage after marriage here today. And this is where you've been, you, you've been to the crucifixion. You've been saved by the blood of Christ. But the truth of the matter is, there's something in your marriage. It needs to be conquered. I believe anything in your marriage or my marriage can be conquered because Jesus wants us to be victorious. Are you Marriages today are made so by I look at this joy pretty often. Thank God she's still with me. But I look at it and I think about what the world would happen in my life. They'd not be able to hurt me. She prayed, Jesus, the one who made the difference. He's the answer to marriage problems today. He's the conqueror. You say, well, my child has been. My child has that. Jesus said, we're more than conquerors. We might be perplexed, but he's not. We might not have the answer, but he does. Because he is the answer as such. <laughs> All that's going on as far as the shooting in our country recently, those pulling the trigger came from a mother flesh came from a father somewhere. God is needed today. You said, Brother well, how do you know he can conquer anything? Jesus, don't start looking around at this person, that person. Looking unto Jesus, the author, everything in between, and the finisher of our faith. That's what we keep our eyes on. That Jesus, that Peter says, has come that he might pave the way for us, not just to heaven, but to pave the way for us into abundant life. I didn't come to those feet, steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you might have life and have it more abundant. That's it. He is the answer, the comfort of whatever. Life confronts us with. Jesus. He was there with the Father in the very beginning. He always has been. He was right there when the old devil was whoop, picked out of heaven. He didn't do what he did in Matthew chapter 4, in Luke chapter 4, so you and I could have a story. The Bible says when he left that Jordan River, after he was baptized, he was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, not for Jesus, for you and for me. In the same three ways that you and I are facing every day, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Every time the devil knocked on the door, he sent the word of God. Why did Jesus do that? So you and I would learn to take the Bible and get the devil away when he comes to our head. Resist it. Have victory. Over as such. The last thing 
It won't be here enough for about this. He's coming. We preach Christ. He's coming. We preach Christ. Not coming in the mid trip, the middle of the tribulation period that follows the rapture. We preach Christ who's coming, not at the end of the thousand year millennial reign. We preach Christ who's coming. He's imminent and he is coming. Before one moment of the tribulation, those seven years that cover most of the book of the Revelation are ushered in. Are you there? He is coming. The rapture is a personal thing. It's a literal thing. It's a bodily thing. Oh, my. This corruption. You can see that more and more. Shall put on incorruption. This martyr will put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass. No more death. Death is swallowed up in victory. Therefore, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. You say, are we going to shout in heaven? If we start out shouting, I believe we will be shouting when we get to heaven. You say, well, that's the Lord. No, we're going to all be shouting. Are you there? And the dead in Christ, loved ones who have gone through the door of death, their spirit will come back with the Lord and be, I would like the word, reunited because that old body is gone. And there's a new body coming. Be united. Then we'll be caught up together. Can you imagine us oh, waiting to see each other on the way up? Where are the astronauts? Well, hold up. <laughs> and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm going to try to look. There's a road that runs by your door right now. I mean, there's a road in the Bible that runs by the door of every human being. The Jericho Road. You've heard it song. On the Jericho Road. It's known as the Road of Opportunity. There's the opportunity for every sinner to be saved. So he's coming. He's coming. But the only ones that are going up will be those who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb that you have done. There's a time of separation coming when Jesus comes. The Bible puts man in different classes sometimes. He says some are like a goat, and some are like a sheep. And when the Lord comes, the sheep say, we'll leave those goats. Some of you, with some age on you, you can identify with this little better, but the Bible says that the wheat and the tares they grow together. But when the Lord comes back, Tears will be left behind. The wheat is going up to heaven. I live on a farm. We plant so many acres of wheat so we have enough wheat to take to the mill. And then you go back later and pick your flour up and you have enough flour to last you for the year until that time comes to bring back a rain. The Bible says that there will be some that are saved, some that are not saved. The saved will be caught up out of here. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, there's only two rules. Every human being is on one of those rules. The Bible teaches us it's a broad road. That broad road leads to a devil's hell. Matthew chapter 7. 
I have, thank God, he said, and there's a narrow room. And that leads to the bliss of the Lord. Leads to heaven. Every person here today is on one or the other. You are headed straight to heaven today, or you are headed straight. You keep straight. You're on the right road. You're coming right into it. It's not for a few more miles down there. Have you ever been told that? Yeah. That's reality. We preach Christ because he's coming. The Bible says he's coming in a time when we think not. Right. When's the last time you thought he could come and interrupt what I'm doing right now? This will take care of anything that needs to be taken care of if we get a hold of it. As far as I know. He could come at any moment. Revelation chapter 22 says, 7, verse 12, 7, 12. 20. He's coming quickly. That's getting out of here. Are you ready for his coming? God bless you. We preach Christ. Crucified. Buried. Risen. Coming again. We preach Christ, crucified, curative. Anything the devil has put somewhere, he can move it. Anything you and I have that the devil has planted in our lives, he can root it out. Any wrongs in our lives that Satan has brought about through this flesh, Jesus. See, I went to a psychiatrist and he told me this. I went to a psychologist and he told me this. I don't care who you've been to. I'm telling you who to go to. He's the answer. He's the answer. We preach. Christ. Let's talk about Jesus. Wherever we go. Preston used the word indescribable. I didn't know he knew that word. 
Thank you. 